In this next video, we're going to be talking about nav bars. Now, nav bars are similar to grids, like we've learned about in previous ones. However, they're actually, instead of, uh, you can have multi-rows, you can have multi-columns. However, it's um, instead of actually being just grids with content, it's actually buttons. And so the entire nav bar sections are separate buttons that you can click on. So I, I see this being used for like navigation. If you have uh, some type of uh, navigation down at the bottom and you want them to go to the next page, well, you can have a nav bar in the footer, and you can have a next, and you can have a back button. And so the next button will take them to one page. The back button will take them back to the other page. So that's why I see nav bars being very useful. However, you can have this in the content area as well. You don't have to have it just in the footer. You can have it in the content area. And like we see in this uh, image here, we also have multi-rows. So you can have multiple different uh, selectable sections that the learner can uh, select and or the user can select and take them to different parts and so it could be like a whole menu structure or something like that so that's nav bars let's go ahead and get into the code and let's take about or let's take a look at first of all what other items we have multi row we can also have icons icon position bottom position left and the different types of positions and themes those are the types of things that you can do within the nav bar so let's go ahead and hide that and let's open up the index.html file that's contained that we've created, been working with in other projects and inside of this I right now I just have some blank content and this is where I'm going to build my nav bar so I'm gonna first of all just create this inside of the content area we're gonna then move it inside of the footer section so we can see what it looks like in the footer section but in this case I'm just gonna say div tag and then within that div tag we're going to assign a data dash role like we do with our pages. So we're going to say data dash role equals, and then within quotes, we're going to have nav bar. This is going to be a nav bar, everything with contained within this div tag. So within that item, now we have to have a list item. Now the list item is like what we do with our normal list views where we have different list items, but that becomes our button. And then inside of there, we have to have an actual uh, button itself. So we have to have an href with the uh, class of UI. So I'm going to say href for now. I don't know where it's going to go, so I'm going to hit pound. And then I'm going to say uh, add a class here, equals. And then we're going to say ui-btn. Actually, with nav bars, you don't actually need to assign a class unless you're going to have it as an active class. So in this case, let me just go ahead and just say button 1. And then now I'm going to copy or just let's preview that for now. I'm going to save that. And I'm going to come over here, refresh it, and you'll notice now we have our button here. Now, one thing I forgot, you'll notice there's a bullet point automatically because I forgot to wrap this up inside of an unordered list. And so I need to make sure that it's an unordered list. Um, and then let's go ahead and just uh, tab over that here and then just end the unordered list, which with is uh, UL. And now I don't have that bullet point. But it is a nav bar, so when I select on that, it automatically turns to that content. Now, the nav bar automatically assumes that you're going to be navigating to a different page. And so that's why once I've selected it, it stays blue because that's now active. Now, you could stay on the same one and you can have something else happen, um, but it assumes that it is now active until something else has been selected. So let's go ahead and add another button to that nav bar. So I'm going to go ahead and just say uh, button 2. Now, like I mentioned before, I don't need to have a class here. However, you'll notice where it comes in handy. So here I'm um, just op or selecting the different nav bars, and you can see only one is active at a time. Let's say when I come to the page, you'll notice as soon as I come to this page, um, none of those buttons are actually selected by default. If, if I want one of those selected by default, well, all I need to do is this is where I, I would add my class, and that class is going to say UI, dot btn and then um, let's make sure we get btn where it's a dash instead of a equal sign and then we're going to say active this button is going to be active when the user actually comes to us so you'll now notice if I hit refresh this button is active no matter where I'm actually navigating to from here. So if I have a little page navigation down at the bottom, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, um, well, if I want the user to know what page they're on, well, then I can have button 1 highlighted for button for page 1. Well, if they go to page 2, then I can now have button 2 as the active state. So I would just come in here 
and on the page two content I would just go ahead and cut that and paste it inside of page two and now page two would be selected so that's just one example that you can do with the active um, with the nav bar here so let's say let me go ahead and get rid of the active so let's just uh, not worry about that for now and let's say we want to add an icon well you can add an icon to each button by adding an attribute of data dash roll or sorry data dash icon and make that an equal sign and then within quotes type in the name of the icon that you want to use now if you don't remember in previous videos we talked about where to actually look up those icons let's go ahead and revisit that real quick I'm gonna to go to jQueryMobile.com I'm gonna click on the demos here go to jQuery mobile 1.4.2 demos and then I'm going to scroll down over on the left hand side until I find icons as soon as I find icons I click on icons below that this is the menu I'm gonna click on the page and now I can see all the different types of icons, see what they look like, and see what the name that I need to type in in order to actually use that icon. So in this case, I'm using the grid. Well, let's go ahead, and so I don't have to type everything out, I'm going to copy that attribute. And I'm going to paste this attribute in here, and I'm going to change, instead of grid, let's go ahead and just add star here. And now if I hit uh, refresh over here, you'll see that the default uh, position of that icon is top for nav bars. Now that's different with buttons, but uh, at least for nav bars, the default position is top. Well, let's say I want to change that position. Well, if I want to change the position, all I need to do is come into the div tag that contains the nav bar, and I'm going to say data dash icon, and then we're going to say icon POS, which stands for position and then equals and then within quotes we're going to add the name of the position so let's say I wanted to have it on the right so I'm going to go ahead and save that refresh this over here and now the icons are now over on the right well let's change that over to the left if I don't like the the right here I'm going to hit save preview and now the icons are over on the left one more option let's go ahead and change this to bottom and hit save and then refresh over here and now the icons are on the bottom. Now that's the same options that you have as buttons. And all you have to do is add on the data, icon, pos, and then the position. All right, so that's how you get started with nav bars. Now let's go ahead and uh, take that nav bar and let's uh, move that into a footer. Now it does make sense. You can have it inside of here. Let me get rid of some of the grids, especially if you want like a tabbed interaction or you tabbed. Uh, elements or something like that you can still have the nav bars right in the page I get rid of the icon so I just have a nice clean uh, two button element here and you can see now it's automatically uh, there and I can have two different elements that would show text I can add some code on there that would show text depending on what's selected well if I want this to be kind of a page navigation well it makes more sense to actually put it inside of the footer so let's go ahead and create a footer here and I'm going to say okay div tag and in that div tag I'm going to add a data dash role so we're going to say data dash role equals and then within quotes I'm going to say footer and now <clears throat> within that footer I'm now going to add this um, elements I'm going to copy that unord or this nav bar this whole div tag and I'm just going to say within the content is just going to be some text called content and inside of the footer and paste that nav bar, hit refresh, and you'll notice that nav bar is now within the footer. It takes up, because the footer by default takes up 100% with no padding on the left and right, it's automatically going to do the same thing. Well, it's not down all the way at the bottom, so I may want to, on my footer, like we learned about before, data dash um, fixed equals true. Actually, data, instead of data fixed, we need to do data position and the position is going to be fixed. Now if I refresh, now my nav bar is down at the bottom and I can use that to navigate from one page to the other just by typing in what the name of that page is right after this hashtag inside of the nav bar. But now it's contained within my footer so it'll always be down at the bottom once I have this attribute data position equals fixed. So that's how you get started with nav bars, how you start uh, building. You can add on more nav bars if you wanted to just by adding more list elements here. 
uh, list items and that would add more bars. I can bring the icons back. So if I want an icon for home, if I want an icon for next, if I want an icon for back, I can do that as well.